What's up, Chupapis? What's up, How's dude? It going? Uh, we're gonna be doing a valve adjustment today. If you don't know, these cars oh, require. We do it too, because I was talking while you. If you're not aware, these cars do require a valve adjustment every 30,000 miles or so. I'm pretty sure nobody's ever done it on this thing. Granted, neither have I. I've owned this car for a little more than 50,000 miles, probably at this point. But we're just gonna jump straight into it. Welcome back to Dave's Builds. And to do this job, you don't need a whole lot of tools. Just what you see here. Just what you see here, bro. <laughs> just what you see here, man. Wrenches, a few extensions, a caliper tool. If you have electric power tools, that's great as well. A flathead, the BMW tool for the actual shims. 32 mil, 18, 13, couple 10 mils, variety of them, just because you, you'll, you'll need a long one and a short one for various reasons. An 8 mil, a T25, a T30, a spark plug tool, feeler gauge, a one and a quarter inch wrench and a giant flathead like this and you should get this job done like to take a little moment and thank Dave from Turner Motorsports because again if you haven't seen my videos Dave from Turner Motorsports has helped me out so much with getting me so many things and repair items for my cars and whatnot so I just like to say thank you Dave appreciate you yet again appreciate you man to do this job properly you have to jack up the car and remove the undershield from underneath there's gonna be five eight millimeter bolts you remove all those you remove the entire plastic cover the shroud has four t25 screws on it there's gonna be one on this side one in there and one in each corner pretty much so once you get this far in it's all pretty Pretty simple, you just gotta remove a bunch of plastics, a bunch of pieces. I like to work with a little bit extra room just in case. Therefore, I remove this entire piece right here. It can be held typically by four T30 screws. For the fan clutch, uh, it can be difficult to do if you don't have the proper tools, but I figured out a way to do it a long time ago. A one and a quarter inch open end wrench and a giant flat head. Lock them in there and you turn counterclockwise because that is a reverse threat. So on the side of the head, in order for me to remove the valve cover a little bit easier, and like I said, with a little bit extra room, I'm gonna pull this ground wire that holds these coil cables in. That is going to be a 13 mil bolt right over there, right on the side of the head. You're going to see a ground cable coming right straight to it. Yep, right there. Remove that and I will be able to move this all out of the way and it's going to be a lot easier to work on. Now that this has way more room to play in, we can move this all aside. Very nice. Next up, I'm pulling the coil packs. Sick. Bro, you love doing that whenever I'm recording you, dude. <laughs> so, Eugene, is this also part of uh, whatever you're doing here? Of course, yeah, because it's mandatory to drop a socket at least once during this job. <laughs> On the side of the valve cover, there's going to be a 18 mil banjo bolt right there. Got to remove it. Be careful, there's two washers. We're going to replace those as well. Yes, this is apparently very common with these jobs. In the very, it's a very common thing to drop one of the shims that I'll show you later on. But luckily, if you have a facelift engine like this one, this is an 06 M3, they have, as you can see right there, where the valleys are, that go down into where the valves and the actual piston meet. They have little nets or the little, these little plastic pieces right there that prevent anything from falling in there, really. And apparently the shims are thick enough not to fall through. So that's a good thing. But if you want to be extra precautious, you can stuff those valleys up as well and it should be good. Next up, we are pretty much ready to start measuring valve clearances. First off, I'm gonna start with the very first set of the intake and the exhaust one. You wanna rotate the engine clockwise until the camshaft lobes are facing just vertically up, right? So if the head is tilted a little bit, you just want them to sit exactly straight along with the head angle. To rotate the engine clockwise, you need a 32 millimeter socket. You put it on the main crankshaft pulley, slide it on there gently, and start rotating. And you will see how your engine starting to rotate once the intake cam which is the top one in german engineering um, the intake are labeled with an e and the exhaust are labeled with an a this is an intake cam once it's facing all the way up because the cam lobes are tapered they're like a pear shaped uh, once the very tip of it and the smaller taper of it is facing all the way up you know that you have 
clearance. So right now, what we can do is actually measure the clearances, make sure they're within spec or not. To check clearances, first off, we need to know what the clearances are, what the appropriate clearances are. So for the intake side, the appropriate and tolerable clearances are anywhere between 0.18 millimeters and 0.23 millimeters. That's a really small amount. So the way to check it is you need a feeler gauge like this one. I have two sets, these are straights and these are curved. Ideally, these are the more perfect ones for the job, but this set for me doesn't have the exact numbers to go off of, so I'm gonna try to make these work. And just out of curiosity, I'm gonna check the lowest tolerance point, right, which is 0.18. As you can see here, this little feeler gauge right here is a 0.18. 178 which is perfect because that is our lowest tolerance if this one doesn't fit we gotta adjust the shape if it's too tight that's a bad thing if it's too loose depends how loose it is based on what the next feeler gauge is so as you can see right here this is the cam lobe and that right here this little flat piece is the cam rocker the shim sits underneath that rocker on top of the valve so we got to measure in between the rocker and the cam lobe itself you want a little bit of resistance you want it to be a little bit catchy but not enough to where it just slides through immediately in this case it's a little bit too tight and this is actually a 0 0.178 which is a little bit concerning because it's a little bit too tight it's not really within spec and this one let's just test it it goes in it's not too terrible there's a little bit of resistance not too bad that's actually probably ideal and just out of curiosity let's check the uh, 0 0.229 because it's pretty close to 0 0.23 which is our absolute maximum tolerance for these it doesn't go in one bit which is a good thing so in this case let's just try out 0 0.2 because ideally that is the tolerance we want for the intake ones it also doesn't really want to go in so that tells me it's just a little bit too tight we'll adjust it the perfect one was the 0 0.78 it slides in pretty nicely that's not bad at all all right for us to get the shims out what you're gonna do there's this keeper right here you just slide it off you just pop it off it's gonna be sitting pretty much on this rod right there that rod holds the rocker arms as you can see just clips in pull it off and now you're able to slide away the actual rockers as you can see that is the top of the rocker you are now able to slide it away to the side it drops down and from here from the bottom we are now exposed to the shim to do this job properly you're gonna need a special tool like this which has a little magnet on there it's a little tab you pick out the shims and you place the new shims with this tool because as you can see space is very limited shout out to Turner Motorsports for providing all these parts for me by the way the tool the shim kit the valve cover gasket kit yeah we're gonna do this job let's go to get the shim out since it has a magnet you just hover over it there you go the shim is removed. When you get this kit from Turner Motorsports, this Wiseco kit, it comes with various numbers of shims, right? Depending on which one you need, we're gonna measure out the original one that I just pulled out. You're gonna need a caliper tool, zero it out, and we'll measure it out, 2.33. So I'm gonna put a slightly thinner one in there. The cool thing about these shims is that you can reuse them. So let's just say we have a 2.33 here. We can drop it in the 2.33 and reuse it for another time in case another one needs a thicker one, you know? Um, we'll grab a 2.28 shim right here. Have the numbers on the shim facing downward. That way if you ever need to replace them, or remove them, you know exactly what shim thickness this is. Now, just out of curiosity, I'm gonna take a 0.2 millimeter, right, which is our ideal spec. I'm gonna put it in there, I'm gonna measure it out, and there's a little bit of resistance, a little bit tight, but she fits. Let's just take a 0.18 then. If this one goes even more freely, then we got our sweet spot. Yep, this one goes in much more freely cool where before the 0.17 was the tighter one so 0 0.2 let's try that out again just to be safe she goes in a little tight but she goes in and that's the next that's the best shim we could find so this shim is actually good we are totally good on this one since this one is off this is a 0 0.2 millimeter it fits a little tight but good enough. Let's just check our most tolerant one, which is gonna be a 2.23. If this one doesn't fit, then I'm just gonna keep the shim there and it should be perfect. So this is 2.23. It doesn't wanna go at all. So this is now done. Valve number one, done. We can take this little clip back on now and you just 
slide it back on there. Stick it in, it clips in. Perfect. So now ideally you do want to do all the intakes in order first and then move on to the exhaust side. Just for the sake of the video, I'm going to rotate the engine until the exhaust cams are facing all the way up and I'll measure this one for you and I'll show you how that's done. Okay. Exhaust side lobes are facing up. We can now take our measurements and see. So now moving on to the exhaust side, it's the exact same procedure except the tolerances now are a little bit different. Tolerances for the exhaust cams are now 0.28 um, is the lowest and the highest we can go, the thickest we can go is 0.33. So the ideal spot would be a 0.3. Just out of curiosity, let's start with the thickest one which is 0.33. Unfortunately, it does, it fits pretty freely. So clearly this one is completely out of spec this side 0.33 is not fitting one bit which is kind of cool so let's take 0.3 which is our ideal spec fit it in there let's see if she goes also doesn't want to well it's slowly making its way but a little too tight still which okay let's just check uh, 0.28 that is our bare minimum that can fit Also not fitting. Interesting. So, okay. Well, this one is too tight and this one is too loose. I'm going to start measuring the shims. Fish out the shim. There she goes. 2.33. That is a little bit too thick. We're going to go down a size because at that point the 0.33 wouldn't fit. The gauge, the 0.33 wouldn't fit. So I'll just try to go one size down to a 2.32 to measure it out to be sure. 2.32. Perfect. Let's go put this shim in and measure the tolerance now. Go in there, slide it in. Be careful because this might fall. There you go. I'm gonna slide that rocker arm over it. Perfect. And I'm gonna take a gauge. Let's try the thickest one first. The one that fit last time, which isn't supposed to fit, which is a 0.33. This one. Let's see if it goes. It doesn't budge one bit, okay? Let's go size down, which is our perfect ideal spec, which is a 0 0.3. It goes in. There's a little bit of resistance. That is good. It's right in between that sweet spot, so I like this one. Uh, this valve is done. Moving on to this one. 0 0.3, that's our ideal spec. It doesn't fit. Okay, let's try our lowest spec, which is a 0 0.28. Also doesn't fit. It wants to, but it's not fitting. It fit in a little bit, but with force, we don't want that. We want it to freely go in there. So we're gonna move the rocker arm out, pick out that shim. Voila, let's go measure this boy. 2.33 as well. So it was just like the previous one. So I'm just gonna give it a shot. And this is a 2.28. It's a little bit thinner than the previous one we just tried out. Okay, shim is sitting in there. Rocker back on, feeler gauge. Let's try the perfect one, 0.3, that's our spec. It's almost going in, but a little tight. 0 0.28 goes in, a little bit of resistance. Let's try one more size down to get it in that sweet spot. So I went down a size, I got an even smaller shim. It's a 2.24, let's try this one out. Let's grab a 0.3 millimeter, yep, right here. Yep, there's a little bit of resistance, actually feeling pretty spot on, nice. And then to make sure that our most thickest feeler gauge isn't fitting in, take a 0.33, put it in there, see if it fits. If it doesn't, we are within spec. It fits in, unfortunately, very rough but it fits in. So I'm gonna take the shim previous to this one because there is no shim size between this one that we have now and the one we tried previously. So the one previously was our best bet because this one exceeds our limit. So 2.24 in this case, a little bit too thin. We're gonna go with a 2.28. That's gonna be our best bet. We're gonna double check. 0 0.33 should not fit, which it does not. That is good. 0.3. is about to fit, but not quite, in 0.28, which is still within spec, fits in. It's a little bit loose, which is good, because that means the clearance is in between 0.28 and 0.3. So 
We're in spec there. There we go. That is on. And in this case, cylinder one is completely done. We are ready to move on to the next cylinders, but just like I said previously, try to do the intake side first, then move on to the entire exhaust side. It just makes it more even. You don't lose track of it easier, and it's the exact same procedure everywhere. Just make sure your tolerances are good and go by standards. Let's move on. And in all reality, that is pretty much it. Once you get all your valve clearances checked and double checked and adjusted accordingly, you know what I mean? That's pretty much it. The next step is pretty simple. You gotta replace your valve cover, obviously. A few tips and tricks I like to do on these engines specifically. You see where the Vanos unit is right here? There's a crease. And a lot of times if you don't put RTV, some sort of gasket maker, right? Some RTV gasket maker, it's gonna start leaking here. So clean this up with some brake cleaner as well as on this side, apply some RTV. You don't need to put a lot, just a little bit does the trick a lot of the times. In the very back of the head, there are two valleys right there right behind each cam you can't really see but if you put some rtv on the edges right there maybe even the entire valley really that's what i would do you will prevent some oil leaks also at this point i've done my spark plugs not too long ago as well as my coil packs if i were you and you haven't replaced those and you feel like you need to and it's you know time's coming up this would be the ideal time to replace your spark plugs and remember if you are going to be doing your spark plugs at this moment of your project remember not to put anti-seize on it bmw specifies not to put anti-seize just put them in the way they are and torque them down to 25 newton meters and you should be good. All right, dude. First startup after a valve adjustment. Fingers crossed, eh? Well, dude, there you have it. That's how you do a valve adjustment on an E46 M3. Dude, if you're new to this channel, make sure to hit like and subscribe. I know, I know it's cliche, and I say this every single time, but it does good stuff. It does good stuff. If you're unaware, we got a V10 M3 in the back that we're building. I mean, dude, it's this thing's a beauty, man. This thing's a beauty. Still have a lot of work, but we are waiting for a whole bunch of parts. Uh, it's, it's gonna be fun. The E39 M5 needs some 11. E46 M3 is the daily driver always need some sort of love and so just make sure you stay tuned dude appreciate your peace <laughs>